Hi, everybody. I'm Sophia, and today we're going to be talking about flowing, which we know is one of the most important skills in being a good debater and helping you win those debate rounds. So today we're going to focus a little bit more on how to flow as a varsity debater, especially if you are a new varsity debater. But of course, a review of flowing is always super helpful. So just keep in mind that flowing is speed note taking. And this is so important during the debate round because you want to know what the other team is saying. That way you can respond and ultimately help you win the debate round. So just some general things that you guys hopefully know by the time you're watching this video is that you wanna have one flow paper per case. So if someone is running a disad and a counter plan, that would be two pieces of paper. Um, and then other things such as using two different colors, one for AF, one for NEG, making sure you have your own version of shorthand, and then also leaving space between arguments. And here I actually have a picture that shows why it's so important to leave space between your arguments. I like to tell people to leave about two to three fingers on your paper. And that's because even though you might only make one argument, the other team could make multiple, maybe two, three arguments that you see here against that one argument. And it just helps you keep your flow even more organized. So let's talk about flowing in varsity, which is a whole new ball game. One of the biggest things about being in varsity is that you have new evidence that you often have never heard of before. And that's totally fine. But the first thing that you should do is take a deep breath. It can be really intimidating if someone is reading new pieces of evidence that you've never heard of and are going at a super fast pace. But keep in mind that you really wanna focus on the tagline and that's what you wanna focus on writing down. So while the other details in the card are just as important, those are good things that you can listen to and refer back to, but you don't necessarily have to write down all of those small details. And then something else to keep in mind is that in open evidence and varsity, you have the opportunity to ask the other team for their evidence. So they might show it to you on paper. Um, I know starting an email chain can be popular sometimes. So always make sure that you're asking um, for each other's evidence. And then also keeping your old, old flows for practice is so important. Not only can you practice and redo some speeches, but you never know if you're going to hit another team from that same school and maybe they read similar pieces of evidence. So another um, topic that I want to talk about in terms of flowing as a varsity debater is this thing called cross application. And it's basically when um, you make one argument and it can answer multiple arguments that the other team has also made. And so keep in mind um, what's really unique in debate is that you actually don't have to extend everything. And I think sometimes that can be a misconception where people think you have to extend every single argument, but that's not always the case. However, when you are cross applying one argument from one case to a different case, you want to do it as if you were extending the argument because you kind of are still extending it. And so keep in mind when you extend an argument, you want to be explicit and clear and concise. So just like how you would say, judge, I'm going to extend this argument by this author in this year. And here's what that card is about. You're going to do the exact same thing when you're cross applying. So say which argument you are cross applying from and talk about the author and then go into detail and explain the warrants a little bit more. So I know that cross application can be a little bit confusing sometimes. So we're going to go through one of the examples. And so this is a great one here. You've got an affirmative and they read two advantages and both those advantages are human rights. And then the neg is going to stand up and read two disads. And maybe let's say that these two disads both have um, an impact that's very similar. In this case, it's going to be war. So the AF is, of course, going to stand up and read some sort of defense against that. And they might make an argument such as human rights is more of a priority. And so the NAG might choose to only extend one of the disadvantages, which is totally fine. Remember, we talked about before, you do not have to extend everything. So it's very possible that, that the negative might kick out of one of the disads, maybe during the NAG block. And so the AF is allowed to keep extending this previous card that they made saying human rights is a priority because maybe even if they read it on a different disad, that argument is still very applicable to the one disad that the negative did try um, and extend. So flowing across application can also be a little bit confusing. Maybe you've been flowing arguments on 
one float paper the whole time. And then all of a sudden, um, Ned kicks out of the disad. Well, you don't necessarily just want to crumble that flow paper and toss it to the side. Instead, what you should do is that you should move that argument to a different flow paper. Really, whether you can move it to whatever flow paper you would like and works best for you. But I think that the best way to do it and what most people prefer to do is to move that argument wherever the speaker tells you to. So if he tells you, take this argument from our disad flow and move it to our case flow, then I highly suggest you following what the speaker says to do. And then just keep in mind that you want to have your own shorthand for any argument that was cross applied. So maybe you have a star and you write CA, maybe you draw like an incoming arrow. So whatever works for you, just make sure you realize that, hey, this argument on my flow is cross applied because I see a CA. That's super, super important because sometimes it can be a little bit confusing. All right, and just some big takeaway tips, especially for cross application. Um, you know, those aren't things that we always talk about in debate practice, but those are more so things that you learn as you just debate, do more practice debates, you participate in more debate tournaments, which is awesome. But try and think about the bigger picture and how arguments can be connected. You might not always be specifically taught that you can apply this argument here, that argument there. But those are things just to think about as the debate progresses. And you might be surprised how many arguments you can cross apply in the future and how helpful it is. And then also in varsity, just be prepared for new evidence. Though this closed evidence packet is great and super helpful, we always want to be helping you guys move on to the next level. And especially in varsity, having new evidence is kind of that next level thing. And we want to help you guys get there. So just keep in mind, take a deep breath focus on the tagline and everything will go great. So good luck.